Squared Spotlight Art Talks highlight member and friend artists of all ages and experiences. It's the whole crew. It's the whole crew. Yay. Welcome, welcome. Oh, my friends. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Wow. So, um, we're going to get started. Um, welcome, everybody. This is Any Squared Spotlight. Today, we're talking with Natalia Sasteda. And... Um, and uh, and she is an interdisciplinary artist and does all kinds of things in all kinds of mediums from murals. I just saw some T-shirts on your on your Instagram, uh, a block prints doing the the T-shirts, uh, painting, drawing, like cake decoration, all kinds of things, multimedia artists. And Natalia, I'm excited for your talk, and I'm excited to see more in depth about you. So go ahead and give yourself an introduction and talk about yourself. All right. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, like she said, I work in all kinds of mediums. Um, I just can't stick to one. I just can't stick to one. It's, I don't know, it's just who I am. And that's how, how I've been able to make my artwork and make some money off of it too, being, you know, versatile. Okay, so I'm gonna start my slideshow and I'm gonna share my screen. Well, my video is going to go away, so you're not going to be able to see my pretty face for a little bit. It's okay. All right, so like I said, my name is Natalia Sustaita. I'm an interdisciplinary artist from Chicago. Uh, I work with acrylic, watercolor, painting, biography, printmaking, jewelry, pastry. And I mean, that's just some of the stuff that I do. Um, but one thing does remain constant in my work, and that's the duality of life and death. Skulls, plants, flowers, and mushrooms will always be found in my work. Uh, my goal as an artist is to inspire other people to create art themselves and to hopefully one day have a studio where I can teach and guide other people to create things that they love from art to, you know, recipes and cooking stuff. Uh, my early childhood influences. I was really, really lucky and fortunate to come from a family full of artisans. My dad is an upholsterer and my tia Oliva was a seamstress. So I, I learned to, you know, sew and do clothing design and furniture design. You know, as a kid, I would make stuff for my Barbies. And I kind of all learned that from my tia and my dad. And then uh, my sister Eliana and Blanca were both visual artists. Pencil drawing and photography were both of their mediums. And I'll get a little bit more into how they inspired me in my other slides. Uh, my elementary school, my art teacher, Miss Russell, immediately saw my passion for my art and encouraged me so much. I would always finish my assignments much faster than all the other kids. So I would take my pick of all the art supplies that she had. So that was a lot of fun. And I remember that as a kid. And then um, in sixth grade, I entered Marwin. My older sisters had already taken many art classes there, so I was extra happy and excited to enter the sixth grade, finally to be able to attend Marlin. It was so fun. My first class there was called Pencil, Paint, and Possibilities, which is a class that covered many mediums. And then I just think it was funny that I ultimately ended up still using many mediums to this day. Um, then I entered high school. This is some of my high school art. Um, I took a lot of art classes at Lakeview High School, and I continued to go to Marlin until my senior year. And then I also went to Connect Force at Alternatives. I also started working at a bakery all in high school. So all these things started happening around me and I just, I took it all in. So this is on the bottom left, a stencil of my face, self-portrait. And then on the right is a hallway that we did like a perspective drawing, realism. It was really hard. <laughs> These are some of my scratch board pieces. Um, my concentration in AP art for my senior year was of my friend's band, Savagery. 
and they were my, you know, some of my closest friends throughout all of high school. So they were definitely, you know, a great concentration to have. And I'm happy that I did it. It just, it was like taking pictures, you know, recording of time and they still play music. So that makes me happy. And I still make art. Well, yeah, favorite pieces. Yeah. Thank you. These are all scratch board. And then the ones with, I added some watercolor after I did the scratch board on the bottom right one, just to try to add some color. I was experimenting. These are some more of my high school pieces. Both of these pieces won uh, a framing contest that our, my teachers had entered me into. And both, so both of these pieces got to get custom framed. I was really happy for free. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And then uh, printmaking was my favorite art class in high school. These are some of my stencils that I made in high school. And a lino cut print, one of my first ones on the left of my best friend, Izzy. And then Frida Kahlo and then Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> some other stencils that I did in high school. And then um, Connect Four Side Alternatives was uh, another thing that I did after school. Um, I started this just to hang out with my friends and learn to break dance and have fun. But then it just ultimately ended up being another art education experience because it was all about um, hip hop there. You learned all the different elements of hip hop and DJing, break dancing, graffiti, all kinds of stuff. It was amazing. Of being there. So I learned a lot about graffiti. I learned a lot about spray paint and break dancing too, but both of them, it was so much fun and a big part of my influence. And then I started working at a bakery in high school. So I started learning how to decorate cakes a little bit. These are some of my first cakes that I made in high school. Uh, I was working at Chuck E. Cheese too. So I made a Chuck E. Cheese cake and then um, a birthday cake for my friend who turned 17 with a bunch of band logos. So my first cakes. <laughs> Some more cakes that I did. Uh, the skull, the Vic Rattlehead skull, I did for my friend Izzy when she was 19. And then the other cake I did for my friend Giselle. And then these are just all for fun, you know, to give to my friend. That's how I started off, you know, just as a something fun to do. And they're pretty much just like sculptures that you can eat. <laughs> and um, these are some Cupcakes, Chicago Skyline cupcakes that I did. I made the Chicago Skyline out of chocolate so you could eat them. And then the two on the left or on the right, the cake is actually a meatloaf with mashed potatoes and I dyed the mashed potatoes blue. So it's actually a savory dish. I just thought it was so fun and I like to play around with it. I learned how to cake decorate. So I used mashed potato icing to cover a meatloaf. And then the one on the bottom, the one that looks like a pizza, is actually pie crust with raspberry strawberry sauce and white chocolate shavings. So I, I don't know. I just thought it would be fun to do stuff that looks sweet, but is actually savory or it looks savory and is actually sweet. That was a fun project. I want to do more stuff like that. Some more cakes that I did. I got a chocolate pecan cake, a strawberry crunch cake, a chocolate hazelnut cake. Uh, and then I started getting a little bit more extravagant with my designs. So I started, started doing more 3D stuff, a Five Nights at Freddy's cake, a Beetlejuice, and then Bowser's shell. I made the spikes for Bowser's shell out of um, ice cream cones. So everything is edible. And then these two are my favorite cakes that I've done because they're anime based and I love watching anime. The one on the left is Kurama from Naruto with his nine tails. And I put a candle at each end of the tail. This is definitely my favorite cake, the most like sculpture I like to. And then the one on the right is Attack on Titan cake. And that one went viral on TikTok. I was so happy and very surprised, but still happy. <laughs> More food stuff, catering and plating. I started working for a catering company in 2004. And then I started working at the Museum of Contemporary Art, also doing catering in 2018. And I'm currently working at the Line at Pochos in McKinley Park, still trying my best to make beautiful plates and delicious food. But these plates right here were at the Museum of Contemporary Art. And that that's where I really, I felt very balanced with food and with art because they took their plating so seriously. Like it had to look like art, you know, it had to be presented in a beautiful way, just like a painting would. And they just couldn't stress that enough, you know, making food look good, taste good, everything. 
the first thing that you do is you eat with your eyes. And I still take that advice to this day. My friend um, or my chef, Pulisa, told me that. And um, jewelry, I also started doing that in high school. Well, I started doing jewelry when I was 12. My sister, Liana, was doing jewelry. And then, of course, I proceeded to copy her. Uh, yeah, she, everything she does, she's just drawing, I do drawing, she does jewelry, I do jewelry, she does baking, I'm doing baking. I was just like a little copycat, but I'm still very thankful for that. Um, so yeah, these are some of my jewelry pieces that I did. Um, the one on the left is made out of coconut shells that my mom got from me, got for me from Mexico. Some more pieces, I did like a wood burning and eyeballs. And I got a bottle cap again that I got from Mexico, thanks to my mom. Um, and all these are sold, but they're still my favorite pieces. This is more of my recent jewelry. I've been working a little bit darker, more chain work, spikes. This is my favorite piece that I did, a solar system necklace. So it's got 10 strands, it all hand beaded. And I did like a little makeup look, a little photo shoot to show off my necklace. And this is one of my displays, just to kind of show off, you know, it's a good picture of everything that I do. Um, murals, jewelry, paintings, t-shirts, bras, all kinds of stuff. And then I also do photography, there's so much. As a kid, I loved using a disposable camera. And then later I learned more about photography through my sister Blanca and various photography classes, both at Lakeview and at Marwin. So I, yeah, I have my sister Blanca to thank for my interest in photography and I, I learned a lot from her. These are some of my double exposure photos that I did on my 35 millimeter camera. That's self portrait. And then I have another picture of my best friend, Natalia Virafuentes. <laughs> She's always an excellent subject. And then the more double exposure pictures that I did um, of a model on flowers and the one when I was at the carnival. The carnival one kind of looks spooky to me, but I like it. Um, I liked also just to walk around and document stuff that was going around in my city. So these are some 35 millimeter photos of a building that burned down on Elston by like Jersey. And I just thought it looked interesting and looked cool. You could see the inside of the building, kind of creepy. Some more double exposure photos. This I took of a band. So the one on the left, I took the photo and then I flipped the camera upside down and I took another photo. I really love how these turned out. I was worried because it was dark, but they came out great. And then these photos I took while I was on vacation to New York that the Saffolds took me to, thank you so much. And then the other trip was to LA to go visit my sister Blanca. And these are both street performers. I just like to see the contrast between, you know, New York and LA. It's very funny, interesting. My art after high school, 2010 through 2015. So this is pretty much like the first five years of my art career when I really started to take things seriously. Um, in 2010, I began working at an arts and crafts store. And uh, one second. <laughs> Uh, so in 2010, I began working at an arts and crafts store. I learned a lot from the products, the customers, and my coworkers. And I also started teaching classes there for the first time. And then one of my coworkers there um, was Natalia Virafuente. So that's where I met her. And, you know, we got together after that, you know, artistically. And we were helping each other out for the years to come. And then I also started vending and having more consistent art shows in 2012. These are some of my earlier pieces. The Simpsons one-liner that I did was very much inspired by like graffiti one-liners and I just wanted to you know, see how far I could push it. So this is all one line. I started with Homer in the middle and I worked my way all the way around. And then the painting on the right was a, just like a yo-yo hand. I don't know what I was thinking, what I was doing, but I just like painting hands and drawing hands because those are very hard things to do. So I wanted to make sure that I was good at those. Um, these are some, another series that I did. I forgot what artist I was inspired by, but 
Natalia had a book of this artist and he had just animals and just random funny things in the back and I was just very inspired by that so I wanted to do something similar and all these pieces sold right away so I should probably keep doing more but <laughs> um, but yeah no I just thought it was funny so the blurry one with the frog says I'm not allowed at the library anymore I don't know I just thought that was really funny And then I continue to do flowers. I always like flowers in my early work and in my later work. These are both gifts I made for my friend Giselle and for my tia Tina. Also more nature stuff. I did the, the one on the right, right before I moved to Colorado, just to kind of capture the moment, you know, I was kind of in between Chicago and Colorado at the moment. So was, I wanted to capture both of them. And going into my sketchbook art, I have, I counted my sketchbooks the other day. I have 27 sketchbooks from the last 10 years and they're all pretty much full. And I just, it's a fun way to just let loose and have fun. And it's just a lot less pressure than painting on canvas. So these are some of my random sketches that I have. A lot of them was just, you know, I would add to it little by little random stuff or other ones. The one on the bottom right, is um, one trying to express my period pains. So I don't know if you can tell, like the red in the center is kind of like where my waist would be. And then the spiral on the right side of the sketchbook is like my head, you know, dizzy. And then death up in the corner. So yeah, I would always just, you know, paint how I'm feeling. The one up top is just flowers, watercolor flowers. I would do collage stuff, kind of work, all kinds of stuff in my sketchbook just to, kind of have fun. Do you just, uh, organize your your notebooks or is this a steady stream and fill it up? Um, yeah, it's just a steady stream until I fill it up. Sometimes I'll go back if I see empty pages, I'll fill it on and do something else. I wanna make sure everything's full. Okay. That's like a big, I don't know, that's a big thing with me. I wanna make sure it's full gotcha. even before I start another one. But yeah, my sketchbook allows me to have a little less pressure than painting on a canvas. So, and if I like it enough, I'll turn it into a painting. So this is an example of one of my sketches that I did and I turned it into a painting. And then the Bart one, you'll see in my later slides, the painting that I did of that one. So that's like my original sketch of my black light Bart. So my art and my paintings from 2016 to 2020, that's when I kind of started sticking more to leaves and skulls and flowers and just sticking more to that stuff. I, I like the, their symbolism. So more, more nature, more mushrooms. And then I started doing black light stuff, which I love and I still do. I love doing black light stuff. It's so fun to see just, to see it in a different light, really, literally. More black light stuff. So here's the black light part that you saw earlier. And then the mushroom and skulls, this fox skull and mushrooms, that one I did a lot. This is the first one that I did for a mushroom art hunt. And I dropped this one, a bucket of blood, but nobody, somebody took it, but nobody claimed it. Nobody said that they found it. So it's, it's out there. It's out there somewhere. <laughs> More black light stuff. The top left is a scratch board piece that I did of a fox skull and mushrooms. Your self portrait is a black light thing? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's also a black light one. I didn't post this one because it's kind of patchy to me, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, it's a black eye one. I like it. I like how my hair glows and the leaves. But yeah, black light stuff is so much fun. I think I'm gonna keep doing that for like the rest of my life. <laughs> More black light art. He was, this was a uh, morning glory flowers and mushrooms and a leaf skull. The morning glory I practiced for a mural that was coming up, the mental health mural that you'll see in the later slides. This was like my practice painting for the mural so I can do a good job. Um, some of my pizza art, I love pizza. It's my favorite food. I love being from Chicago because we got the best pizza. So I did my Chicago pizzas and I got my pizza skulls too to incorporate my skulls with everything too. But yeah, I love the pizzas. I think I'm gonna get this as a tattoo or something. Both of them, I don't know which one, maybe. But yeah, I like these designs a lot. 
delicious designs. Um, my self-portrait. This one I did last year around my birthday. I try to do a self-portrait of myself every year just to kind of uh, document how I age and myself and document my progress and my skills, how they, you know, get better or worsen throughout the years. Who knows? We'll see. And it's all based on opinion anyways. But these are some more um, pieces that I did. This is a multicolored pencil. I really like how this turned out. So I had to put these in there. Um, my friends are also always going to be my inspiration. So I'm going to paint them a lot. And that's usually my go-to thing, just to paint my beautiful, beautiful friends who are also artists too. They do their other stuff, but I love Some are on this, this Zoom. Yeah, some are on the chat. On the, there's Squeak, uh, my friend Izzy from high school, and my friend Alma, and my friend Nat. Yeah, they're, yeah three out of four are on the chat right now. Thank <laughs> you. Here we go had to put your photos in. Um, my friend Elise and my friend Cross and Juan and more little doodles on the bottom. My friend Connie, my friend Angel. These are all pictures that I did, you know, just for fun, just to draw them because, you know, I admire them and I like their faces. <laughs> um, murals. I painted my first mural in 2013 at the Flatiron Arts Building. And my first outdoor mural was in 2019 on Damon and 14th Street. That um, one was shared by my friend Martha on her on her group today or a few days ago. The Svenguli one? Yes. Nice. Yeah, that one's going to be shared. Your, she shared, shared your mural after <laughs> you shared it. <laughs> it's going to be on what? It's going to be on Svenguli on this Saturday. Yay. Yeah, they're going to feature, so I'm very excited about that. But yeah, these are my first two murals, and both of these murals were um, uh, Natalia Virafuentes. She's the one that that helped me get these both of these walls. So I have her, I have her to thank for my for my start. And then here's a picture of me and her on the left. I'm helping her out with one of her murals. And then again, she helped me out with the Chicago one, the pizza skull that I did and her and Nosferatu with the hot dog with collaboration that we did. And then this is the Svenguli one that I was talking about earlier. So yes, very grateful for Natalia's help. And I'm always there too. You know, if I get an opportunity, I'm always more than happy to share that with my other art friends. So the wall at Bucket of Blood, I was able to, to get for us. So we all painted that together. Um, it was me, Squeak, Natalia, Tati, and Angel. And my friend Ricky came by for a little bit to, to help throw in some stuff too. So I was very thankful for that moment and all these murals that we did um, after, after the riots and the protests and stuff. Um, <clears throat> these murals really, really mean a lot to me and to everybody really just to, it was a way for the artists to continue the fight on the streets, you know, a lot of people I know couldn't go protest or just because of COVID, you know, due to their health, they just couldn't go out there, you know? So this was another way that artists could spread the word and, and keep the fight going, you know? As well as letting people know that these businesses are open because before they're boarded up, they look closed, they're losing money. So by beautifying them, we're helping the businesses, we're continuing the protests. And it was just so much, it meant so much and it's so powerful. And I love these pieces. <laughs> Um, these two murals too, again, just very important murals that I did in the past, collaborations with my friends. Um, Are these all from this year? They're from 2020. Yeah, or 20, yeah. I meant in the last year. Okay, yes, yeah, they're all from the last year. These two, I put them together because they were actually one weekend right after the other. Um, we did the mental health mural the weekend before Meeting of Styles strategically so we would get paint and we, we wouldn't run out of paint and we would get the colors that we needed you know because we knew they were going to be gone so i'm glad we did that so the mental health mural is on well, the right and that was, was that about that um that is about um so the blue person with the paintbrush represents somebody with depression using art as a tool to help them through it to kind of make them feel better and they're using that paintbrush to create beauty, to create um, light in their life. So that's what you can see as the pink person and all the flowers 
that's what the person in the blue is painting. Mm -hmm. And the person, the pink person represents people that you can reach out to that are there for you that that can help you through these times. So that's what it that's what it meant. And it just it, me it meant a lot to everybody in the neighborhood. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that one um, in the next slide. But the, the meeting of styles one we did, I did a collaboration with Natalia Vera Fuentes. She did the, the portrait of the woman and I did the neon mushrooms on the side around. And we had some extra wall space too. So of course, like I said, we're always willing to, to help out other artists, help out other friends and, and get them the connections that we got too. You know, we're not gonna, there's more than enough wall space for everybody. So we got Squeak on board too, and, and she made a magnificent piece right next to ours. I'm so happy and I love walking by it every day. <laughs> so this is a kind of um, a little process videos of the mental health mural. We're buffing the wall, we cleaned it, got a pine bottle, we're cleaning the neighborhood, we need to check your heart, we got videos that I made them. This is the day two. This one explains a little bit more about the mural. And then the unveiling day. We gave away art kits. We took the bee. I was so happy. We painted flowers and the bees thought they were real fun. That was like a goal. Not a goal, but like, wow, I was proud of my flowers. So what did you do on that day? It was harder to hear you. Um, you gave away art kits to kids? and you Yeah. 100 art kits. We got a bunch of uh, sponsors for this wall for to buy our paint and to buy art supplies. And we boxed up the art supplies and we gave them out to the neighborhood children. Yeah, it was fun. This mural it really just set the bar for how I want to do murals in the future. I want to, you know, let the community know what's going on, our ideas, uh, what they might want to see, and also clean up the block or wherever we're going to be painting, we're going to make sure it's clean, whether we do it or have like the community come out and do a big thing where we all, you know, clean up the block and also give out art supplies and art kits to kids, you know, because that's always amazing to see. You come across a beautiful new mural and then you get handed an art kit. I would want to go make some art too. And that's what we want. Art plus community. Awesome. Exactly. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> so the murals, the little mushrooms I did in my house, um, just so to practice. A lot of these walls are in my house right now, actually. Um, the landlord gave us back our deposit because our house is going to get torn down once we move out. So we got to go crazy on the walls and practice and do whatever we wanted. So I've had a couple of my friends come out and paint. And I painted, I practice a lot. And these walls that I practiced on, help me get jobs and other murals, you know, out in the world. So I'm happy. I did a black light mural, the skull and the mushrooms. I love that one. I'm gonna be sad um, when they destroy the building. <laughs> uh, this is the love fridge project that I did. This was a lot of fun. Somebody just reached out to me on Facebook. They tagged me in a post saying that somebody needed an artist to paint a love fridge. And I was the first one to comment. <laughs> you snooze you lose so I got to the fridge this was so much fun again I, I was just really happy to do community work and art at the same time because this was all volunteered it took me like four days to paint all this well maybe like three days where is that love fridge this love fridge is on Laverne and Fullerton so please go go take some food if you need some food go oh. donate food if you got extra food to donate or the different love fridges all over the city. But I'm very, very happy to be a part of that and to have uh, art contributing to such a great cause. Um, art shows and live painting events. 
So the picture all the way on the left is my first live painting event at Hop. That's a lot of fun and very different from vending or displaying art, you know, because you're painting right there in front of somebody and you are the entertainment pretty much. So I wanted to make sure to do something like that look cool. <laughs> And then the picture in the center is um, live painting at Fiesta del Sol in 2015. And then the picture on the right is me vending some of my prints, some of my Adventure Time prints at the Nostalgia Show at the Loud Arts facilities. That was a really, really fun time. All these shows, so much fun. Fiesta del Sol 2013 and 2015 Art Pavilion. Both of these were very impactful to my art just to see other artists and, and see their work and see how much they've done and see how passionate they are about, about their art. And, you know, pretty much just see other people like me and like-minded. And um, I became friends with everybody, everybody here in all these pictures. And I still talk to them to this day. And I'm just very thankful that they joined my journey and I'm, I'm a part of theirs as well. So yeah, there's me and Nat and Brenda and then there's Squeak and Mario when I first met them. So fun. Our friend Cruz, the photographer, Walter. So many amazing people and amazing artists. So I'm very happy and thankful for her for that time. Um, bending at bars like Exit and Underground Lounge to displaying at galleries like Xiaobi Art Center and Tidlanian Art Gallery Theater. Um, I like both of these. They're they're very different from each other, but I, I like vending at shows, at concerts, at bars. Um, just because people especially girls, you know, they look cute and they're missing earrings or they need a necklace or something. And I'll, I'll point that out. I'll be like, you know, what would really complete your outfit. So it's it good to sell at people, especially it's a lot easier to sell to intoxicated people, <laughs> especially jewelry and stuff. That one, that sold a lot. Girls, great customers of mine. Um, the centerpiece I displayed at Xiaobi Art Center. It's an acrylic resin piece. Um, for the coffin show and I've always wanted to be a part of the coffin art show I've always went to every show and it's always so many amazing artists that participate so I was really happy and honored to be a part of that show the display on the right was a solo show that I had I was the featured artist for the little Mexico film festival so that was a lot of fun and just like again just a huge honor to to be a featured artist in, in anything really right now back then I'm just so happy and grateful and thankful that people are interested in my art. Thank you. <laughs> um, some more live painting events. This one I was live painting um, at Pilsen Fest. So again, another festival that I'd always gone to and I always loved and I finally had my chance to be a part of it for two years. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, more vending displays. I took my displays when I was vending very seriously. I like to make it look, you know, or somewhat organized, I like to make it look, you know, appealing because I think arranging my art on the table is another art form in itself, really. Uh, you have to have a good display. Um, my face painting. Um, I started face painting when I was working at Michael's for a birthday party randomly. You know, I was working and my manager was like, your art, right? You paint, come here, I need you as a face painter. So he just, just threw me in there and I started painting kids' faces. And I was like, this is cool, this is fun. And so I kind of practiced more and I got more extravagant with my own looks instead of just, you know, birthday party stuff. So I did like a neon skull, did a Salvador Dali inspired face paint and a sugar skull. Uh, me as a bat. And then um, these are some more sugar skull pieces that I did. Um, at the John Hancock for a Pachanga party. I was really happy to do all these. This was so much fun painting all these faces pre-COVID. These are great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I had, I had a ton of fun. And a, a lot of the people too, they, they have good ideas. Like the man in the center with the bottom half face, like that was his idea to do the bottom half. And I thought it, I just really like how that one turned out. It looks cool, like a mask. Um, some more of my face paints. So the one in the center, I did like a neon one. I dressed myself up as a mushroom. And then another like Christmas skull piece. Um, clothing and alterations. I like doing that too. Again, since I was a kid, I just like fashion design. I like making clothes for my Barbies. So of course, when I got older, I'm going to make clothes for myself. 
And uh, that's what I started doing bras and vests and stuff because I just wanted to do it for myself. And other people liked it. They liked my bras, so I kept making more bras. And that was fun. These are some of my favorite ones. And a lot of, some people own these bras. I'm very happy. And it makes me so happy when they wear it. Here's some more alterations that I did. Um, I use like skeleton Halloween hands and I sold them on, I glued them on, some studs, chains, some t-shirts that I did. These are um, like bleach painted shirts. Yo, I like those shirts. Thank you. Do you yeah. have any more? They're very big. Uh, not at the moment, but Damn. I will soon. Yeah, they sold out pretty quick. I was, I was surprised and happy. <laughs> they look nice. Good job. Thank you. Um, my digital art. Uh, so in 2017, I got an iPad and I started, I started making digital art. I started drawing and painting on there and it, I just did it to make, um, I mean, I don't know. I just knew it was going to be a good investment. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do. I figured I'd make stickers and prints, you know, and that's what I've done with these pieces. I made stickers and prints of them, but um, it just opened the door really to a bunch of other stuff. I did a bunch of album covers for people. And so these are some of the album covers that I did. And you know, this, these really pushed my limits too. I, I don't know, I never made album covers before. So it was just fun to, to experiment and I've gotten a lot of good feedback from them. And then I also um, got some of my illustrations in a book for the first time. So this book, um, I did like a recipe for a wheat paste and then and I also drew out a recipe for a Molotov cocktail. It's all in the book. You gotta buy it. I have some for sale. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a lot of fun and it was so cool to you know have my art in a book for the first time. Some more digital art that I did. Some um, logos that I've designed for Gutter Glass, my friend who blows glass. Um, this other company called Nerdzilla, they fix computers. So that was a logo that I did for them. And then my little COVID-19 skull, I did as a logo for um, the year of 2020. <laughs> and I mean, I guess now too, hasn't gone away. Um, these are some videos that I did. This one that I'm gonna play is of my pizza skull that I painted in my kitchen. This one viral on TikTok, I was so happy. My first viral video it had 100,000 likes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, this kind of explains a little bit about my housing situation that's going to get torn down. So we get to paint whatever we wanted. And then this other video is just like a little tour of my studio in the middle of last year. Artist check slash show you guys around my studio. This is a piece that I did. I used acrylic resin to create layers of dried flowers. And I did some stencil work on there. This is a spontaneous expression piece that I'm working on. I work on this for fun whenever I'm like stuck on my other projects and I just want to let loose. So over here I have a watercolor piece that I'm working on of my friend Angel, who's a bass player. Very excited for that piece. Here's some more acrylic resin pieces that I have out of molds and more dried flowers. These are pendants. And here's a little bit of my wall, some earrings that I've made, a couple of other pieces, some paintings. Yeah, thank you so much for checking out my studio. Oh, forgot about this guy. All right, thanks. So those are just a little check. studio tour. Um, so being versatile is something that I'm really proud of. It's something that has saved me many times, both mentally, mentally and financially. Even my appearance is always changing. I like to change my hair color, I like to change my style, my clothing, everything. I, I just like to be, you know, variety is a spice of life. That's what I like to say. But yeah, I would never want to limit myself to just a few things or stop myself from trying something new. 
um, just like I'd hope people would keep an open mind about making art themselves. Well, yeah, thank you so much. That was my, my slideshow. So I'm going to stop sharing. Stop sharing. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Oh, everybody got muted. Woo! Hi. Unmute. Yes. Uh, Hold yeah. on. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. 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 I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, let me know if anybody has any questions or comments or anything. Thank you so much again for, for listening to me and supporting me and having an interest in my art. Bye. I'm counting as a question. <laughs> <laughs> you can just say it. You don't. Fit. I'm ready. So my question is, um, what's what's the first cake that got you into cake decorating? Like what that that really sparked your passion for it? Um. Like, was there ever a cake you were just making and you were just like, oh man, this is really what I want to do? Um, I mean, honestly, it kind of just started as me making cakes for my friends as like gifts for their birthdays and stuff. And, you know, just trying to transfer my drawing skills or whatever to, to cakes. And I just did it for fun as gifts to my friends. And then uh, one day somebody just hit me up and they were like, I want, I need a cake. Can I pay you? And I was like, wow, I can make money from this. So I was like, okay, <laughs> that's how I started. Um, I can't remember a specific cake though. I'm trying to think. Um, probably the one with like the band logos and everything. Um, Cause that one's like, I was like my first tiered one and I, I just made it for fun for my friend, but I had a lot of fun and they, they liked the cake. So yeah, I don't know. That was that was probably the first one that I was like, this is fun. I want to keep doing this. Is that COVID-19 uh, logo for sale? The the skull? Yeah. Oh, that's a digital piece. So I can uh, I can send you a print. I can make a print. And... Thank you. I would like one. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I will get that to you. Sure. Thanks. We're family, um, by the way. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Staffolds, my I do. <laughs> sisters in laws, but they're also, you know, they took me in too as their daughter. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, She's awesome. Absolutely. New York was quite a trip. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, they took me to New York and just showed me a whole nother a whole nother level of culture. I was very inspired by that trip. I was too. Oh yeah. <laughs> you yeah. inspired us. Yep. Yeah, we had good. fun taking you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a question. Uh-huh. Um so I know you do a lot of mediums. Is there like another medium you want to try or you wish you can try or learn, you know? Um, I know you do a lot already. I'm like, yeah. can you, like what um, else? <laughs> woodworking stuff. That one is because I don't have tools, you know, I don't have a saw or a drill or anything like that. So I would like to build stuff out of wood, out of stuff, you know, functional thing, functional art. That would be a lot of fun to do, but I just don't have the space for that. Cause that's what my dad be amazing. Is. I built furniture so that was something i want to do hopefully i want to try and go learn some stuff from him too yeah that'd be amazing i could see you doing that i can because i think you would be really well uh, do really well with those things i've seen some things with artists going into that medium of working with furniture and upholstering stuff and kind of putting it against a landscape in a room it would be awesome yeah i think so too i still remember i talked to the so he would have to drive a couch. I have a question. Uh huh. Um, if you had like infinite funds to make a giant project, do you have anything in mind that you would do? Like, if you were to throw like an event or make like some sort of installation, what would you do? Like a like a bigger one than anything you've ever done. Um. Man, it's kind of hard to think because you don't you don't really think of yourself as having that much money. But if I did have like unlimited funds, I think I would have like a big warehouse and do different rooms, different installations, kind of like um, like the Wonder Museum or like that one like photo op 
museum or I don't know, but it was like a pop-up that they did pretty much where, you know, everybody had different sections and different rooms, just like an art gallery pretty much, but make them more interactive, have more installations and uh, just make a whole, you know, big event about it, sell tickets, have it up for like a month or two or however long, you know, if it's popular, we'll stretch it out, you know, keep the show going. Yeah. A lot of fun and have just have different artists in different rooms you know and have their work it could be whatever they want it could be sculptures it could be you know projections or it could be plexiglass stuff or whatever you know um i just want to have like a big big space big show like a almost yeah. like a little museum. yeah but another big project that i would like to do is similar to the mental health mural where we just have a huge wall a huge huge wall have a couple you know a handful of artists so i'll collaborate on the wall to have art kits to be passed out have you know people come clean up the block and that's something I want to keep doing for sure uh, nice yeah how's that easel holding you up Matt uh good it's the I same have, one that I, I gave you, that I pawned stuff. up on you <laughs> yes thank you I have a lot of stuff packed up right now I don't have any easel out or nothing, but um, but I have been using it a lot. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So what's the what's the situation with your living arrangement? Not that it's too private, but it seems like you touched on it already. Um, the landlord here is just he's just gonna tear down the building, unfortunately, and uh, he gave us our deposit back, and we've been living here kind of month to month until he makes up his mind about when he's going to do the construction, which I don't think he can right now because of COVID. So we've just been here sticking around, but yeah, like I said, he doesn't really care about the condition of the house anymore. So we've just been going crazy with the walls. Let me see. I can try to, I'm going to show my dirty apartment for a second. Oh my God. But there's a piece that Mario oh, did. That's great. That's fun. Nice. Yeah. So I've had a bunch of a bunch of artists come in and paint stuff on my wall so that's been a lot of fun but again it's temporary you know but a lot of art is just like my cakes so it's okay Do you oh yeah art up the street? i have a lot of mushrooms on my shirt what was the question <laughs> oh you had a question yeah i have a question Mm -hmm. you um do you put your art up in the street like other street artists um the most i do is stickers and stencils but i don't like go tag or anything like that just because i don't want to get arrested <laughs> but you put stickers up right yeah i put stickers up i put stickers and stencils okay yeah How many are you? do you i mean do you print them out or do you do them yourself um the stickers i get printed and the stencils i do them all myself okay like, cool let me see. I don't think I have one right now, but I think I might just try to unmount this for a second so I can show you something that I did. It's like a leaf. Oh, my leaf skull stencil. This one's really big. My biggest stencil that I've done. I just did it on my wall. Yes, that one I'm very proud of. It's very cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah, I like to, you know, keep an open mind about all my mediums and just keep switching it up. I don't know why. I just like it. I, I like I said, I don't want to feel like I'm limiting myself if I stick to one thing. I understand you'll get better faster if you do stick to one thing. But I mean, it just happens. Sometimes I tell myself, okay, I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint. And then someone asks me to make a cake for them. You know, I'm not going to say no to a sale. <laughs> sometimes but yeah like I said I, I wouldn't want to limit myself to one thing I have another question uh-huh what are your recent projects that you have for sale that you can plug right now to everyone watching uh, um prints of my lino cut let me see I gotta make them, but they're pretty easy to make now that I actually carved the stencil out. So here's one. It's so cute. I like that one. Um, my lino cut. So you can, you know, you can request a color or request a background color. This is rainbow and uh, black light reactive. Let me show you. Ooh. <laughs> 
you have any uh, clothing? This is my more recent one. I've been doing t-shirts, but I, I honestly, I need to do a little bit more practicing with the shirts because I don't have a printer. I've just been using um, my rolling pin covered in saran wrap. So I like press the, the line onto the shirt and some prints come out good. Some prints don't come out good. Are you so using I, acrylic? What are you using? In I'm using the speedball ink. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some of them come out. That looks so great. <laughs> I love it. This one somebody ordered, so you gotta you gotta pay ahead of time, and then I'll print your shirt. But right now I'm not doing commissions. Like I said, I'm gonna be moving soon. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna be moving soon. So yeah, I'm gonna I gotta pack stuff. I gotta I got a lot of stuff to do. I can't take commissions at the moment. But this is uh this is what I've been doing. How much are the shirts running? Twenty five deal yeah i'll let you know um when i print more um my turn. hi natalia First hi. Of all, you look amazing me and my friend have been gushing over how cute you are yeah. the whole presentation we were like oh my god she looks awesome she has an awesome <laughs> shirt um yeah I this morning i was like i don't know what to wear but yeah. i put in the yes. shirt <laughs> But uh, I know we kind of talked about this a, f a couple days ago, but um, I just wanted to kind of have you reiterate like what you think you'd be doing as a professional artist, like maybe 10, 20 years in the future. Like, are you going to be here? Are you going to move around? I know Natalia Villafuentes is going to be like a traveling muralist slash teacher person. You know, Squeak is going to like be a, a, like a superstar. <laughs> and then, like, you know, like I know like different <laughs> artist friends. And Tracy's gonna continue to do her community work um, and you know give back to community, but what do you see yourself doing? And also after that question, my friend Lila has a question. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, where do I see myself in the future? My, my main goal is to blow up and act like I don't know nobody. No. <laughs> 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 Dude, I just said that earlier, like a half an hour ago. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> but uh, no, what I what I really really want to do is hopefully here in Chicago have a have a studio space where I can teach art classes and I can do more community work there. Um, my first tier of that would just be have an art studio, have art classes. Hopefully live there too, either upstairs or in the building, whatever. Kind of like how Tracy has her set up, you know. Something like that, but uh, eventually I would like to work my way up to having a commercial kitchen in the facility as well, so I can teach cooking classes or I can have guest chefs come in and teach cooking classes as well to other people. No, I do not want to have a restaurant. <laughs> I just want to have a studio space where I can come in. You know, people can do their thing. They can go, and it's you know no pressure. It's just a class. We're all having fun. We're all learning. Learning facility. That's what I want. Yeah like a little art school. Oh, okay. Awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, my question, looking back to the past, is um, when did you officially start like calling yourself an artist? Like, when was it that you felt you had the confidence to actually call yourself that and then like pursue that? Um, I guess three different times in my life. The once was when I was in, in eighth grade, when I graduated, I got the, like the art kid award or whatever, you know, like you're the most artistic in the class. So like, I was like, wow, okay. I'm art. I'm an artist. I'm an artist. Cool. Wow. Like that's what was, that was like my validation, you know, like you did it. It's in, it's on a plaque. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, my first piece that I ever sold was in high school to one of my teachers. So after that, I was like, okay, now I'm a professional artist. I sold my first piece. <laughs> and um, uh, once I really started taking my art career seriously and, and actually like displaying my art, probably when I was like 21 in like 2012 or something like that. I don't know how that was, but uh, sometime around then, 
it was when I started displaying my art and be like, okay, this is actually what I want to do. And like, this is, you know, like career I want to have, like, I can actually see myself doing it. I am starting to do it. I'm, I'm in shows. I just gotta, I just gotta keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, that's when I started. And so it's been like 10 years now since I've actually like really focused on, on being a visual artist and putting myself out there, being in shows, live painting, you know, whatever I can, even with my cooking stuff, um, it's helped me, you know, uh, meet a lot of different people. I've, I've helped people cook this, you know, a chef from the Caribbean. He came in as like a guest chef for a dinner he was going to do and he needed, you know, extra hands. So I was there to help him out. And I learned a lot about Caribbean food. And it was just always a really awesome experiences that I get from, from food and from painting. I'm sorry, I kind of like trailed off, but I liked yes. it. <laughs> thank you. It's a good trail. <laughs> Yeah, I have I, I a want question. Uh -huh. um, could you talk a little bit more about growing up with like an artistic sibling and like the like the the year gap of you guys and like how how that felt growing up? Just about your influences, like your sibling influences. Yeah. Um, so I'm the youngest of five kids. So both of my sisters were. She's. I don't know how many years apart. Okay, my sister Eliana is like five years older than me and my sister Blanca is like seven years older than me I think I don't know something around that <laughs> but they're they're elder siblings for sure and I guess elder uh, yes elder siblings I don't know <laughs> <laughs> watch out they're probably watching <laughs> um but yeah they're uh my sister Blanca was in college when I was in high school so that's kind of like uh, I guess a time I think I can I don't know. I don't know how many years apart, but so I learned a lot from both of them. My sister Eliana was a visual artist. And like I said, they both went to Marwin. They both went to the School of the Art Institute um, as kids taking art classes. So they were able to, you know, just pass along those connections to me. And I was really thankful and happy for that. It was, uh, like I said, I was very inspired by, by watching my sisters and I always copy them. So of course I'm going to be an artist. That's amazing. Did they ever, were, were they ever like, huh, I don't like this medium, and then, like, gave the stuff to you, and then since you're such a, a flexible artist, you're like, okay, I'll work with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, um, I think you're very resourceful when it comes to, like, the options. Yeah, definitely, like I said, versatility, like, I, I love it, but, um, yeah, I would, I would just take my sister's stuff. I wouldn't, she wouldn't even be bored with it or anything. I would just take it, you know, I'll take it and, you know, sorry, I drew in your sketchbook or I colored in your coloring book. I'm sorry. And like, I just. <laughs> like a boss. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and my sister too, my sister Blanca, she would let me use her camera all the time. Or, you know, when she got a better, newer camera, she would let me use her old one or, or whatever. But yeah, like, just like hand-me-downs, like clothing hand-me-downs, they would give me their, their art supply hand-me-downs. <laughs> the best <laughs> yeah definitely. some more questions has anyone had a question that they haven't the side, yeah, I see that the, the uh, sky is the limit for you you could you're only getting better and better yeah and I mean that you know whenever I see some hard work of yours say, this is this is really good really good one art, you know, one uh, project to the next, one mural to the next. And I've seen your murals uh, on uh, Damon. Yeah, we went to so visit. It, it was oh. just fantastic. You only, you, you only get, the sky is the limit. Let me, let me just say that. I just want fantastic. to say also, we have a wall art with her mushrooms and I absolutely love it. It's hanging in our um, kitchen, our little kitchen area. And the wall art, I just love it. It's really beautiful. It's a different it's a different way of express. It has depth to it, I think. Thank that's you. Like about it. Yeah, yeah. That's a wood burning and watercolor piece that I did for them. Yeah, I showed it in the slideshow. Yeah, it's great. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I want to know like what artists you've been influenced by, like both like historical ones and, and ones that are living and also artists that are in Chicago that you know. Maybe that's a giant question. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a hard one because mostly when people ask me who inspires me or like what artists I look up to and stuff, I, I always say my friends, you know, my yeah. colleagues, you know, because that's that's who's around me. That's the art that I see. And 
Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, Natalia, Squeak, Tatiana, um, they're definitely like, you know, I'm a big fan of theirs. They have amazing art and they've always inspired me for a very long time. Um, but yeah, everybody, Natalie too, and just uh, so many people. But um, I'm trying to think of like historical ones. Mm, oh, um, I like Hieronymus Bach, Bach, his like surrealist stuff, like the dark stuff, like the, the hell and, you know, Natalia showed me his stuff. So that one was really cool. I like, I like the surrealness of it. And I, I like to incorporate some of that stuff too in some of my um, spontaneous expression pieces. So that's something I didn't really talk about was like spontaneous expression. That's something I like to do a lot just to kind of let loose and have fun, you know, not have a reference, just kind of let your brain dump out. I see, I see a little bit of Salvador Dali and Georgia O'Keeffe inspired inspirations, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, Georgia O'Keeffe too, with all her, her nature stuff and then the skulls at the same time too. And just like the, the balance between both of them. Um, but who else, who else? Mm, man, I don't know why I always get put on the spot when I think about this question. Because <laughs> I just have friends, really. Yeah, I'm like, um, uh, uh, I like impressionistic art, you know, like Van Gogh, Monet, stuff like that, you know, just because I I like when art changes, kind of like when black light, you know, if you change it, it's a different light. It, it looks different, just like with an impressionistic piece. When you're far away, it looks so crisp and clean and like you know like a picture and then when you get closer it's like spotted and you know blurry almost so I really like um, art that changes like that when you look at it differently in different angles in different ways okay can I interrupt <laughs> yeah, yeah. now my question is uh looking into into the Mexican Museum of Art the Puerto Rican Museum of Art and the MCA and the Art Institute. What are uh, some of the artists that inspire you from those institutions? Um, there was this one piece hanging in the Mexican Museum of Art that was actually by another colleague named Amara or Rebel Betty. And I really like her art and her pieces. She's a, a awesome activist in the community, but she's also an amazing artist. She does a lot of collage and painting. Like she goes around, does street photography, cuts out par parts of her photography and then puts it into a collage of her painting. And that was a piece that I, I really loved over there at the, at the Mexican Museum of Art. And then um, at the MCA, one exhibit that I saw that I'll never forget was the Murakami exhibit yes. with all the demons and the colorfulness and the busyness of it all, everything's so huge. and. It was just a, like a breathtaking exhibit. I, I loved it. I, I went twice. I wish I would have gone more. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you. Do we have any more questions? Because we're going to start to wrap up um, the, this part, the recorded part, and um, and we can talk freely after, after this. But I um, uh, I want to thank you, Natalia, for your art talk. It was super excellent. Thank and you. if anyone has any questions, it's the moment now to ask them. Last call. I have a cue. Uh-huh. Um, my question is, because I, I see your work and I just, I can't imagine you doing all of that work and not listening to music while you do it. So I want to know what your favorite music is or like what kind of, you know, what do you listen to when you're making work? Um, man, I like a lot of different genres from death metal to uh, hip hop, rap and uh, psychedelic uh, oldies music. But usually how I am, I get stuck on one album or one playlist and I'll keep playing that until I can't no more. And right now I've been listening to a lot of Bad Bunny. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, awesome. <laughs> just like a dance music, upbeat stuff, but Me sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. been stuck on Bad Bunny and like Cardi B. And... Yeah, <laughs> the energetic music, like that makes yeah, like of... very energetic music. Yeah, 
said, yeah, yeah. Like sometimes if I want to get in the zone, I'll listen to like, you know, more smoother, um, like new wave kind of electronic music um, just to kind of like zone out and get in, you know, the flow of stuff and not be dancing around too much. But most of the time I need that energy. I need that like extra bit of like happiness and, you know, energy to, to help me push through some stuff. Yeah, because I know like sometimes I'll look at a painting and I was like, oh, wow, I just listened to Shakira's entire discography while I was doing that or like <laughs> or something completely. Oh, my God, that was really sad. All I listened to was this album. Yep. Um, and then um, something I just I haven't seen it. I really want to go to the Bisa Butler show right now at the Art Institute, but I was like stalking the AIC page and she and her partner, who's a DJ, created a playlist uh, with a song for each of her paintings and it's so cool it's like the coolest thing right wow. so um I'll look I'll find <laughs> the link and I'll, sh I'll share it here but yeah I don't know I just I'm just thinking about how like you know as artists we're inspired by like you know not just other paintings but like music fashion food and I would just I wanted to you know ask about music yeah yeah I like some of my heavier stuff that I listened to like back in the day more so were like Megadeth and Coheed and Cambria and like you know just Cool rap bands. Yeah. <laughs> so any last questions? More, more, more? Anyway, Natalia, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for such a great talk. And it was awesome to get to know your work better because I didn't know half of what you did. So thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. Happy to share. It made me feel good to see all my stuff. And I was like, wow, I do all that. That's crazy. <laughs> so it was a good um, good confidence boost to do this. So thank you. I, I really appreciate it. I was, like I said, I'm just really happy and thankful that this many people are, are interested in my art and I'm happy to share it. Check social media for future Zooms and future streams.